This video is going to cover the method of elimination, which is the second method used to solve a system of equation with two equations and two variables. Uh, so let's start with an example, and then while I'm going through this example, I'll kind of give you guys steps if you want to reference them when we're going through uh, these problems today. So let's say we have two equations. We'll call it the first one equation one, and then the second one will be equation two. So the idea behind the method of elimination um, is that the first thing, the, the basic idea is that we're going to use these two equations to eliminate one of the variables, which we can then use to solve for the other variable, plug that back, back into one of the original equations, and then solve for the other variable. Okay, so first thing we want to do is write both equations in standard form. Write both equations in standard form. For this uh, example, both of these equations are in standard form, so we can just uh, leave it as is for that first step. The second step is the most important step, uh, and that is we're going to multiply The equations or just an equation uh, depending on the problem by a constant so the coefficients of one of the variables are opposite. So um, for this example, this, the easiest way to approach this one is we're basically going to multiply the first equation by a number that will get it to be the opposite of that number. Um, and so this first example we're going to do is multiply the first equation by the number negative 2. Okay, and I'll show that here. So if we multiply the first equation by a negative 2, we'll leave the second equation the same. And now let's rewrite the system of equations. So if we multiply the left hand and the right hand side by negative 2, we're not actually changing the equation. The equation is still the same exact Equation is just written slightly differently. Um, so let's rewrite this. So we have negative 10 minus 8y, negative 10x minus 8y equals, uh, so it becomes negative 44. And then we'll leave the second equation the same. Okay. So the third step is we're going to add the resulting equations eliminating one of our two variables. Um, in this case, when we add these two equations, the way we set it up the y terms will cancel. So let's add these together. So we have a negative 20 or a negative 13 x equals uh, negative 44 plus 18 is going to be negative 26. And so the x value here is 2. Um, so the idea is we, we eliminate one of the variables to get an equation. Now we can solve for the other variable and so that's actually the fourth step. Solve for remaining variable. Okay once we do that we're going to substitute we're 
or variable into the original equation and solve. Oops. Um, and then we're going to solve for the other variables. In this case, solve for y. Say for other variable to keep it general. Okay, so we're going to take the two, and you can actually pick which equation to use. Uh, you can pick this one here or this one. Uh, let's just pick the second one because it doesn't have any negatives. It might be a little bit easier. So we're going to take this x and we're going to plug it into the second equation. So we end up with 5 times 2, our x value, plus 4 times y equals 22. And now we're going to solve for y. So 10 plus 4y equals 22. Uh, subtract 10 on both sides. So 4y equals 12. And then y is going to equal 3. So once we have an x value and a y value, we're going to form an ordered pair. And so the answer for this example is going to be uh, 2, comma, 3. It's always good to check your work for these. I'll check my work just for this first example, and then uh, going forward, we'll just kind of skip that step just for the sake of time. Uh, but I do want to just plug these into the original two equations just to make sure that our answers work, our answer works. So here's our first equation. Let's plug in two for x and then three for y. Um, so if we do that, we get 10 plus 12 equals 22. Uh, that first equation works. Now let's plug it into the second one. So negative three x plus 8y equals 18. This is equation 2. So if I plug in x equals 2, this is negative 6 plus, well, 8 times 3 is 24. And so does the question is, does negative 6 plus 24 equal 18? It does. And so our second equation works as well. So if both of these are correct. Therefore, this is our solution for this example. Okay, let's go through a practice problem where instead of just changing one of the equations, we actually have to change both of them. So we're going to use elimination to solve um, this system of equations. Notice for this problem, um, we can't just multiply one equation by a number easily to get one of the variables to cancel. Um, so one way to approach this one is we're going to multiply both equations by a coefficient. Um, and one way to approach this, this is not the only way to approach this one, but one way we can approach this is multiply the first equation by 5. So we're going to multiply the first equation by 5. Um, and then the second equation we're going to multiply by negative 2. And what that will do is it, it, this will make the coefficients in front of the x terms opposite in sign, and so the x terms can then cancel. So if we multiply the first equation by 5, we get 10x plus 15y equals 17 times 5 is 85, and then we get negative 10x minus 14y equals, well, negative 2 times 29 will be negative 58 and then we're going to add these together. So notice for this one, sort of different than our last question is the x terms are going to cancel. Uh, and So we end up with just 1 times y which is y equals 85 minus or plus negative 58 is 27. Um, and so our answer for this, or the y value for this one is 27, and now we have to find the x value. Okay, so let's plug it into 
uh, one of the original two equations, just to keep it simple. Uh, so let's take y and let's plug it into the first equation. So 2 times x plus 3 times 27, our y value is equal to 17. So 2x plus 81 equals 17. Okay, we're almost done. 2x is equal to 17 minus 81. Well, it's negative 64. x equals negative 32. And so our answer, written as a, an ordered pair, is negative 32 comma 27. Okay, so you can cancel out whatever variable you want, uh, but sometimes you might have to multiply both equations by a coefficient in order to get those terms to cancel. All right, problem set number one. Let's uh, use elimination to solve each of these systems of equations. Um, and one thing I would strongly encourage you to do is try these questions on your own first um, and then check your answers because this content should be review from Algebra 1. All right, so number one. This one is not too bad because if you notice, we actually don't need to multiply. First of all, they're already in standard form. And then secondly, we don't need to multiply either equation by a coefficient because the y terms, if we add these together, will already cancel. So we get 3x is equal to 9, and so x is equal to 3. Uh, well, we can pick whichever equation we want to plug this into. Let's pick the second one. That one looks a little bit more simple. Um, so we get 3 minus y equals 3. Uh, well, I can add, three on both, add y on both sides and then subtract 3. And so y is equal to 0. So here's our ordered pair for the first one. 3 comma 0. Okay, number two, uh, this one is not as simple as the first one. Uh, we are going to have to multiply one of the equations by a coefficient. Well, let's look at the y's. Um, if you notice, if we multiply the first equation by two, then the y coefficients will be op opposite in sign, and so then they can cancel. So I'm going to take this and multiply the first equation by positive 2. And then let's leave the second equation alone. Uh, so if we do that, the systems of equation becomes 10x plus 6y equals 20 or 38. So 38. And then the second equation is just the same. Okay, so notice the y terms, the coefficients are opposite, and so these will cancel. So we have 11x equals 49. Um, and so looks like this one's going to be a little bit messier than the last few. Um, so x is equal to 49 over 11, and now let's solve for, uh, let's solve for y. Uh, I'll pick the second equation here. So we end up with 11, or it's 49 over 11, minus 6y equals 11. Okay, now let's solve this for y. Um, so let's, uh, let's rewrite this a little bit. I'm going to move this 6y over to the right-hand side and then subtract by 11. And to do that, we want to find a common denominator between 11 and 49 over 11. So let's write 11 as 121 over 11. So this becomes 49 over 11 minus 121 over 11 equals positive 6y. Okay, now we can uh, subtract these two fractions together. So 49 over, uh, minus 121, we get negative 72 over 11 equals 6y. Um, and then we could divide by 6. So the unsimplified value of y is negative 72 over 66, but we can divide both those uh, values by 
looks like 5, 6. Let's divide them by 6. And so if we do that, we get negative 12 over 11 equals y. Um, and so the answer for this one is 49 over 11, comma, negative 12 over 11. Let's leave it like that. Okay, and let's wrap up this first problem set by going through um, a question that involves systems of equation with fractions. Okay, so this one is going to be a little bit more challenging. Um, let me start by just rewriting this one down here. So this is problem three. So we have x over 3 plus y over 5 equals 7. And then the second one is x over 6 minus 2y over 5 equals negative 4. Okay, so how are we going to approach this one? Uh, well, if you notice, the coefficient in front of the first y term the y term in the first equation is 1 fifth, where the coefficient in front of the y term in the second equation is negative 2 fifths. Um, so one thing we could do here is multiply the first equation by a 2. Let's multiply the first equation by 2. So 2 times x over 3 plus y over 5 equals 7. Um, and then the second equation will stay the same. So 2y over 5 equals negative 4. Okay, if we multiply the first equation by 2, we get 2x over 3 plus 2y over 5 equals 14. And then in the second equation, we get x over 6 minus 2y over 5 equals negative 4. Okay, now we're in a position where we can add these two equations together, which cancels out the coefficient terms in the middle, the y coefficients. So these will cancel because they're opposites. Um, and now let's do a little bit of arithmetic to figure out what the resulting equation is going to be when we add these two equations together. Okay, so on the left-hand side, we end up with 2 thirds plus 1 sixth. 2 thirds x plus 1 six x. Um, well, if we want to add 2 thirds and 1 six, let's find a common denominator. Let's do 4 six over, or 4 over 6 plus 1 over 6, and so we get 5 over 6. And so on the left hand side, we get 5x over 6 is equal to 10. Okay, now we want to solve this for x. Um, well, we can multiply by 6 on both sides. And then let's divide by 5. All right, so 60 divided by 5 is 12. OK. Now we have to solve for y. Um, so let's plug it into uh, let's plug it into the second equation. I think that will be a little bit easier. So if we take this value, x equals 12, and plug it into the second equation, we get 12 over 6 minus 2y over 5 equals negative 4. Okay, and let's solve this for y. 12 over 6 is 2, minus 2y over 5 equals negative 4. And so what we can do is let's add um, 2y over 5 on both sides, and then add 4 on both sides. And so we get 2 plus 4 equals positive 2 over 5. So 6 is equal to 2y over 5. Okay, so now we're in a position where we can solve for y. Let's multiply by 5 on both sides. So 30 is equal to 2 times y divided by 2. y is equal to 15. So the answer for this one is uh, x equals 12 and then y equals 15. Okay, and that's the answer for problem set number one, number three. Okay, and let's wrap up this video by going through problem set number two. For this problem set, um, 
first I want you guys to try these before I go through them, but you can also use substitution or elimination. Um, sometimes one will be easier than the other. Um, you kind of have to gauge which one you think would be more appropriate in each given scenario. Okay. So let's start with the first one. Uh, for number one, let's use substitution because we can easily solve for b. Um, and so if we take the second equation and solve that for b, that becomes b is equal to 3a minus 3. Uh, which we can then substitute into the first equation like we saw last video and then solve for a. So we get a minus 6a plus 6 is equal to 16 uh, therefore negative 5a is equal to 10 and so a is equal to negative 2 uh, which we can then plug into our equation up here to solve for b. So b is equal to 3 times negative 2 minus 3. So b is equal to negative 6 minus 3. Uh, so the b value here is negative 9. So as a coordinate pair, we're going to write it like this, uh, negative 2 comma 9. Remember the, uh, the coordinate pair kind of acts alphabetically, so the a value will come first. Okay, number two is going to be a method of elimination, I think. It's probably the best one to approach because it's already in standard form. And so I'm going to multiply the second equation by three. Okay, so we're going to take this and multiply this equation here by the number three. And I'll rewrite it down here. Uh, so 12x minus 6y equals negative 15. And negative 12x plus 6y equals 15. Okay, this one is kind of an interesting problem because notice if we add these together, we end up with 0 plus 0 equals 0. Well, this is true no matter what. Um, and so what this means is no matter what x values and y values I pick, um, these equations will always work out, which means that there are an infinite number of solutions here. Okay, there are an infinite number of solutions. Infinite solutions. Okay, and what we're going to talk about in a few lessons is that because there are an infinite number of solutions, that tells us that these are actually the same exact lines. They're just written differently. So that's our answer for this one. Okay, and we're going to wrap up this video with question number three. Um, so to do this one, I'm going to multiply the first equation by three, negative three. Uh, what that will do is cancel out the first terms. And so I'm going to multiply this by negative three. Okay, so if we multiply the first equation by negative three, we end up with negative 0.15x minus 0.75y equals negative 66. Uh, we're going to add to that the second equation. 0.15x, 0.05y equals 24. And so let's add these together. Um, and if we do that, this these terms are opposite, so they cancel. Over here on the left-hand side, we get negative 0.7y equals negative 42. And if I divide by negative 0.7, the y value here is 60. Um, and then the x value we can get by plugging into one of the original equations. Let's pick the first one. Again, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You'll still get the same answer. So we get 0.05x plus 0.25 times 60, the y value, is equal to 22. Okay, now let's, uh, let's multiply this across. 0.05x plus a fourth of 60, well that's 15, equals 22. 
and let's subtract by 15 on both sides. Uh, well, this becomes 7. And then if we divide by 0 0.5, that's the same thing as multiplying by 1 20th. So if I want to solve for x, I'm just going to multiply by 20 here. And so the x value here is 140. So the solution to this equation here is 140 comma 60. Okay. So that's the method of elimination uh, with a bunch of examples. Again, this should be a review. Um, so once you finish with this problem set, work through the more challenging question here, which is a three by three system of equations to wrap up class for today.